العلم يحلو كل ما كررته ولذاك عدت مكررا لحلاوتي
He counted the respiratory rate in the front lines of 300 to 400 breaths per minute, even in summer, so he's breathing so much. He was a respiratory epidemiologist, so he was concerned too much about the high death rate. I asked him, I said, how come this baby actually is taking 300, 250, 300 breaths per minute? What, what amount of tidal volumes he get in and out? And what's the respiratory time he can use for this actually rapid respiratory rate? So he went back to his lab, actually, and they start to invent this simple model, and he get rapid and the common scenario, and he tried to do the first models. If you see the sensor medics machine, you will see that it's just this thing moving in and out, and this direct connected to the baby. So it's moved in and out, it's like the same model of seven. So in and out, this is one, two, three, and the, 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 the distance which is taken the baby the, by the piston away from the valve, this is simply the amplitude. So if he moved till here, this is amplitude five, we move till here, this is amplitude 10, we move here, this is amplitude 15. So each time you increase the amplitude, you're increasing what? You're increasing the volume, isn't it? So if you move 5, this is you give him 5, you move to 10, you give the baby 10. And at the same time, you push in and actively you take it out. And we mentioned yesterday that this is the difference between conventional and high frequency. Actually, the main difference. And the main difference actually here is, is actually both inspiration, expiration active. While all conventional ventilations, inspiration is active while expiration is passive. So this, this is the main difference. So that's why he pushed the air in and he pushed it out. And when he tried actually by his simple models in 1954 actually, he discovered that he ventilating the rabbit very well and he used very tiny volumes like one ml per kilo, which is, which is equal nearly the dead space. There is many theories, there is five theory how actually high frequency work, how to wash CO2, but this is not our uh, issue now. So this is the wiggling. So it's simply, we combining the mean airway pressure we created. This is the map, this is the standing pressure. In the same times around the mean airway pressure, we add the amplitude. And remember, because it's passive and both actually is active, let's assume this is the mean airway pressure 20. Okay, so you put map 20. So what's moving around is the amplitude. So if amplitude 30, this means from here to here 30. Not from here to here 30. This means from here to here 30. So there is 15 below the 20 and 15 above. Okay, so this is the difference. As then we talk about frequency. Frequency is simply the rate. How many times the piston move in and out? How many times move? And we use 5 hertz or 6 hertz or 8 hertz or 10 hertz because just like for easy and practic and just to be more practical instead of you said increasing the rate from 360 to 480 that's why we make it easy so 5 hertz to 6 hertz to 8 hertz but it's the same it means the same 5 breaths per second so 300 breaths per minute so always what we mention in hertz is per second so here we mention this baby take 8 hertz per minute, this baby take 6 hertz per minute. So the questions, what? Which one is bigger in volume? <coughs> 6 hertz, isn't it? Okay. Why? Remember yesterday we mentioned? So why? Yeah, you know, like the simple trick actually, the eye time or the inspiratory time is percentage in high frequencies percentage of respiratory cycles. You cannot adjust it because if you increase the respiratory rate from 300 per minute to 600 per minute, it's very difficult for you to adjust how much eye time this baby need. Like, so you give the baby 600 breaths per minute, so actually you give him about like about like. 10 breaths per second, so you don't know how much 0.02 I times will be and the rest will be 0.08, so it will be difficult. For simplicity, the manufacturers make it by percentage, so the I times always percentage. You have nothing to do with it, it's not something you need to adjust it, the machine automatically adjusts it, so whatever you change the frequency, the I time adjusts the inspiratory, sorry, the machine adjusts the inspiratory time to be 33% from respiratory cycle so when you increase the rate what will happen actually to all respiratory cycle if you increase the rate from 300 to 600 then the respiratory cycle will get smaller isn't it so this will affect also what 
inspiratory time, isn't it? So the volume depends on what? On inspiratory time, it's not expiratory time. So that's why when you increase the frequency, the inspiratory times will be shorter, the volume delivered to the baby will be smaller, okay? When you decrease the frequency, what happened to the rate? It will be decreased, like you move from 600 to 300, okay? So what happened to each respiratory cycle? The time of respiratory cycle will increase, isn't it? Because you go from 600 breaths per minute to 300 breaths per minute, okay? So here the respiratory cycle, the time for respiratory cycle will increase, isn't it? And this is reflect on your inspiratory time because it's 33 percent for your respiratory. So your eye times will increase, and this machine delivered volume all the time for respiratory cycle. So the volume will get bigger, okay? So that's why actually you see here, it's always that when you decrease the frequency, you will get bigger volumes. And this is the difference between high frequency and the conventions, okay? So here, and remember also yesterday when we, speak, when we talk about basic of mechanical ventilations, we always tell our, we always tell our staff, there is, if you, you, if you would like to know the mechanical ventilation, always take it as two parts, oxygenations and, and ventilations, okay? Oxygenations, it's have, it's related to oxygen, ventilation related to CO2, okay? If you would like to improve oxygenations, you, the only thing you can do is to increase the service area. You have not, you cannot do anything more than increasing service area, okay? Ventilations, if you'd like to improve the ventilation, which is reflected to you by CO2, what you need to do, you need to increase the volume so you can wash CO2. So this is service area, this is volume. So here you have something to do with the volume, so you have something to do with ventilation, you have something related to CO2. So each time you're decreasing the rate, you increase the volume. When you increase the volume, you will wash what? You will wash CO2, okay? So this is a trick on it, or this is the difference between conventional and high frequency. So the volume will increase if, or you can wash CO2 if. You increase the amplitude, because the upstroke actually will increase, so here you move, let's assume from actually amplitude 24 to 30. So what happened? The same respiratory cycle, because the baby has the same rate, you didn't change the rate. Let's assume the baby on frequency of 10, and you decided to increase the amplitude to 24. So what happened to the machine? What the machine actually will give you will increase the volume and up. So the stroke volume will go up, but the time will not change. So actually the inspiratory time will not change, the base of it will not change. So you increase it up, by this way you increase amplitude. So you increase the volume so you can wash CO2, okay? The other way actually, this is a respiratory cycle. If you would like to increase the volume, you decrease the frequency, so you will increase the inspiratory time. When you increase the inspiratory time, the volume will increase, okay? So by this way actually you can wash CO2. Increase the volumes if amplitude increase and the frequency decrease. So this is the opposite of it. So here, remember yesterday we talked about our scenario. So let's assume you have baby. We put him in conventional ventilation or typical our scenario. It's happened. Baby 612 grams. We put him in rate 60. He reached FIU2 100%. He's in PIB 25. He's in BIP6, and he's MAP14, and volume guarantee 5. And you have this blood gas, and you saw already the picture of the baby. The baby have BIE, or pulmonary interstitial lymphedema. So remember earlier when we said, each you should know the limitation of each machine you're going to start. If you'd like to use the nasal cannula, you know exactly, or you have criteria, or clinical practice guideline, when you decide or you say this machine or this nasal cannula failed, if you have CBAB or you're implementing CBAB in your unit, when you put limit for your CBAB, you should have criteria, guidelines, say if I reach CBAB 6 or 7 and if I do more than 40%, this is failure of CBAB, then I need to conventional. So what's your criteria to say this, machine, this baby is failed or this baby cannot tolerate any more the conventional, I need to move to other machine. So what criteria? This baby nearly in the maximum of the conventional rate 60 remember yesterday we said we cannot go more than 60 anyone attending yesterday lectures we said after 60 actually you know like you will increase you get the air trapping because you, the, you shorten the expiratory time so you cannot get rid of all air so you get air trapping 
FiO2, we have problem in oxygenation, the baby on 100% and your PO2 is 34, so we have problem oxygenation, you are in PIB 25 and your, your CO2 is 75, so you have problem ventilation. So this baby have both problems actually, oxygenation and ventilation. So what you will do for this baby? I'm like, this is a problem. Actually, for this baby, you have BIE. Like, if you'd like to improve ventilations and you will increase the beam, isn't it? This is the only way. You have to increase the beam to improve oxygenation. But the baby have BIE, you have hyperinflated chest, you remember the x-ray, it was the ribs at 11 ribs. So actually, you will have problem with hypotensions and then you will get more deteriorated and actually maybe you get pneumothorax. You cannot also, uh, for this is for oxygenation. You cannot increase eye time isn't it? Because if you increase the eye time to improve oxygenation, you know, on conventionals you can improve oxygenation also by increasing the eye time. But if you include, if you increase the eye time, you will take it from expiratory times and this will affect the worship of your CO2. So you are trapped here actually. You don't have other option. And this is the maximum settings. I remember yesterday we said the maximum for BIB actually 22, but if your team or not familiar with, you can go up to maximum 25. We didn't allow more than 25. Because definitely this baby will have severe BBD after that. So here we have problem oxygenation and ventilation. So we decided to shift him to high frequency. Good. Uh, anyone using other machines, high frequencies than a Draeger or Sensor Medics or Stephanie or SLE? Okay, because, because it's simply actually if you have, if you have baby log 8000 plus, it's actually the set is there, but just they need the, just they need to, the software, no, the software, you have the sensor here, actually you have the sensor here, actually the machine, the, I mean the company, bring the, so they just can, ju they can just download for you the software, because it's equipped, and they have fully equipped, <laughs> I have nothing to disclose with Draeger, I'm not, I have nothing uh, with Draeger, but just because we use it, and it's very simple actually to implement it, but I know sometimes actually the company sell it without the, without actually the software of it. So it's, they just actually download the software, the machine, and what exactly that what they did in the machine here. We asked them actually, um, Dr. Demidash arranged with them from Dubai, from Dubai, so that's why they get the software and they just download it in the machine, and this machine, you will see it inshallah after 10 minutes, it will work as high frequency. So it's very simple and it's, it didn't need a lot of equipment if you have baby log 8000 plus. And it's very simple actually to use, and we use it very commonly actually. So this baby decided to shift him to high frequency, okay? So what parameter are you going to choose in high frequency? So where is it? And he failed already the function. So if you're going to start, or to, I bet just you need to guess, you know, just like the smart guessing of the initial setting, all is the same. When you do a baby on CPAP, you have initial setting, you need to write it, you need to start, and then after 30 minutes you do blood gas, so you know if the baby takes it too much. So what, what parameters you have on your high frequency? Mean airway pressure, so then you have the map, okay? What amplitude. amplitude, okay, and frequency, okay. and FIO2, okay. <coughs> you have other parameters? If, if you use sensor medics, you will see just down in the order there is eye time, but usually we didn't touch it. If you have it, just fix it on 33%. Just for simplicity and leave it. And in Draeger, like you don't have high time, so so it's it's become more easy. So here you have how many you have actually? So you have one, two, three, four. That's it. So all four parameters you need to choose. Okay. Do you have any problems for FiO2? Isn't it? You're gonna start FiO2. Your baby on 100 percent, isn't it? This baby, our baby on 100%. So what if I told you're going to use? Isn't it? 
the same, 100%, isn't it? Because your pain is desaturated. Remember, saturation was 85 and is being 234. So when you decided to use, you will use 100%, okay? So what parameter you, now you have to choose? You have mean airway pressures, you have delta B, or the power, or the amplitude, and you have frequency, okay? Remember the basic rule of mechanical ventilation, you should divide oxygenation from ventilation. This baby has two problems, of course, oxygenation and ventilation. Which part, which parameter of this concern with the oxygenation? Math, excellent. So this part is for oxygenation. So, so how you choose your initial parameter for mean airway pressure? This may be taking MAP 14 <coughs> on conventional ventilation. Two above, excellent. So you decided to put the baby on 16, okay? One, six. So you decided to put the baby on what? 16, isn't it? Okay? Yes. So what you will do? You immediately you take your baby, you, get, you set your machine, put initial settings, you decide clinically, you put the baby on MAP 16. So what you will observe for this baby? You know, this is related to what? Main airway pressures related to service area, related to oxygenation, isn't it? Okay? So what you will observe for oxygenation? What parameters? Huh? Saturation, isn't it? So immediately you connect the baby, the baby already has power of center, you look for the saturation, isn't it? You look for the saturations, okay? Let's assume that now saturation actually moved from 85 to... to 86, okay? So what you will do? Yeah, 86, but, but we don't like 100. See, please, yeah, don't stay, I will tell you, there is a study actually. Shows actually the baby who stay 24 or if I to 100%, they have pulmonary hypertension and remodeling of the pressures of their pulmonary circulation. So the pulmonary circulation gets second, and this is because of oxidant stress. So that's why we don't like 100%, and there is many reasons, and that's, that's why now in research situation in RP programs you are away in 100%. So please don't stay longer time on 100%. So now you are in 100%, and your, your saturation is 86. What's your now we are looking for oxygenation. What do we do? So let's assume, I will give you the scenario. Let's assume you start map 16 and saturation drop to 70. Okay, what do we do? Yeah, increase map. So we have map 16, go to 18. Well, just while you are watching, it will take a minute. You know, remember, just if you increase the service area, within second, actually, saturation will improve. So you go to 18, what you will do? Observe again, saturation, let's Im improve a little bit to 80. So what you will do? Increase to 20. So go to 20. Saturation start to be 88. Okay. It will be 5 to 100%. So what you will do? Go to map 20. Okay. Saturation become 92, 93. Okay. So now you decided to win the FIU2. Okay. So you go by FIU2. If you are FIU2 drop gradually like 90 or 80, it's actually the recommendation of the expectation should be less than 70 or 60 to start to stop going up. So if you go up, if you go up by your mean air pressure <coughs> up to 20, and you win the FIO2 to 70%, then you are satisfied about this initial setting. So it's just a trial, isn't it? So just a trial, you increase the map, increase the map. And don't worry actually by increasing the map, <coughs> because you're just opening the collapse in alveolar. You're just recruiting the lung. This is the expression we use. You're recruiting the lung. So this is actually the mean air vibration this baby needed, okay? So don't worry about increasing the map. And remember, map is not the harmful parameter. I started with a close lung injury. It is not that it's the polyotrauma, it's the parotrauma, it's the oxygen actually, it's the real trauma, but it is not the mean airway pressure. 
it's the main inner portion it's the best actually the best ventilatory strategy it keeps the lung well inflated it keeps the lung well recruited okay if you didn't keep the lung well recruited actually whatever you do you will not improve the ventilation so here you reach map 20 and now you win your fi2 to 70 or you have baby very sick baby like bie sometimes you stay at 80 so that you okay, are happy have saturation 88 we are satisfied with this map this is a map we'll wait for a time okay this is for oxygenation okay you have nothing you, you don't have any other parameter to improve oxygenation except the map it's not like convention the convention you have the beep you have the i times isn't it sometimes even bib increasing the surface area so it can share an oxygenation and this is one actually if you look one of the disadvantages of high frequency it's uncovered oxygenation completely from ventilations so oxygenations you have mean air pressure ventilations you have delta b and frequency so you can manage this alone if you if you have baby hypoxic but his co2 is acceptable you can increase the map and it will not affect your co2 so this is the advantage of high frequency so for this you use the map isn't it okay so now we have parameters and we know this baby needs this map 20 sometimes you go to 22 sometimes you go to 24 sometimes you go to 28 uh, hyperplasia we reach actually up to map 35 sometimes and the baby actually was in the 1.5 so whatever the baby need just go in map don't worry about the map okay for the map don't worry about it so here you are satisfied with the oxygenation of your baby and you are happy now we'll go to the second part which is the ventilation okay this baby has CO2 75. So what delta B you gonna to start? This is the setting. I'm sorry, it just went, but this is the setting, and this is a blood gas. Yeah, 25. So immediately, when you shift the baby to high frequency, you adjust your setting, you decided to put delta B 25. you will start the 25 okay so what you will do we said after you, 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 you after 30 minutes you do blood gas because this is the times it's actually need for your blood gas to be more or less reflecting your ventilator so you need at least 30 minutes 20 to 30 minutes can reflect your ventilator so you decided to do delta b and you you make it 25 what you will do for the time this is your baby you move it you connect it and main airway pressures in second you are just you reach 25 delta b we go 25 we go you see what you will observe yeah yeah yes so movement you remember when you put the baby on conventionals you just bring baby from labor and delivery moves when you mean conventionals you would you pick up any setting for third baby you start the 20 over six so how do you know immediately that this 20 is enough for this baby you see the chest movement, doesn't it? Before you do blood gas or anything. If the chest movement is moving too much, then then this is too much 20 for him. So you just go a little bit to 18, to 16, till you see it's appropriate. How we know it's appropriate or not appropriate chest movement? Because we know the normal newborn. We go and examine normal newborn and we see how much normally the chest is moving and then what we need. At the same time, if you didn't see any movement on 20 in conventions, you increase to 22 to 24 till you appreciate some movement of the chest and you say it's okay, I'm satisfied about this sitting on convention. Here, exactly more or less the same, because delta B, it's more or less like the BIP. So you decided to get 25, you look for the baby chest. You didn't, you didn't observe any movement, any wiggling. So here, because it's so rapid rate, it will wiggle, it will not move up and down, so like just wiggle. So here, you didn't observe anything. Like you see, look for the chest. The chest is not moving. Really. So again, you go from 25 to 27 to 29. Okay, just be sure you're doing it in correct positions. Everything is okay. Okay, and just be sure. Then the baby start to wiggle. Okay? If chest start to wiggle, then you stop here. So let's assume here you reach to up to delta B 30. So the chest wiggle, but is this wiggle too much or appropriate? We have some clue. Remember yesterday we mentioned. Look for umbilicus at the side. Okay? We need the umbilicus to move, but you don't like to see the side moving. Okay? Or even the head, by the way. You don't like to see also the head jumping with them. So if you see the umbilicus only wiggling with the chest, 
this is appropriate we don't like to see the to see the side working and we don't mm -hmm. exactly actually the artist how you do you just stay straight in the front and that's why we're adjusting the delta we take you from you it's actually about like maybe 30 seconds and you reach to the appropriate delta you adjust your delta b let's assume this certain 30 you see your the chest is wiggling very well and you are happy the side is not moving so this is appropriate for himself what about frequency What's your initial setting of frequency you choose? Remember our scenario? This baby is 612 grams. So we set our frequency, we can get from 8 to 12. But we decided to put this 600 gram baby on the minute. Dr. A decided to put him in 8 frequency, Dr. B decided to put him in 10, and Dr. C decided to put him in 12. Which one is right to start? You know, that's just, we don't have a clue now, we're just starting us. Which one is more or the right? Yeah, we have, we have one rule actually controlling the frequency. The smaller the baby, the higher the frequency. So this is the start. The smaller the baby, the higher the frequency. So if you have at we mentioned it and I said it's not evidence based, it's just something anecdotal, just experience. We tell our staff or resident just for simplicity and also we make our life and their life easy. If you have baby less than one kilo, start with a twelve. If you have baby from one to two kilo, please put him on ten. If you have baby more than two kilo, start with eight. So this is the opposite. And it's simply actually if you look for it, because you remember we said when you go higher in frequency you get smaller volume. So that's why you need this smaller volume for this tiny baby. So that's why we go higher the rate on the tiny baby. So that's why we start by 12, 12 hertz per second, okay, for the tiny baby. Why we start with 8 hertz per second for the big baby, like 3 kilo or, uh, or more. So this is the simplest way. So this baby, our baby 612. So what, what frequency will start? 12, isn't it? So we put him on 12. Okay, so we start with 12, isn't it? So the setting now the baby hour in map 20, isn't it? Delta B 30 and frequency 12. So what you will do now? Excellent. So just X3 you need it and you need plus gas in 30 minutes actually. In 30 <coughs> minutes you will do blood gas and chest X3. Why you are doing chest X3? Extra. So we'd like actually to comment on the inflation of the lung, isn't it? And yesterday we said actually the success and high frequency is the volume of the lung, or the recruitment of the lung. If, you're, if, if like the diaphragm level between 8 and 9 reps, then you are in good shape. Okay? This lung will recruit. It's actually, you can see the lung irritated, and you can see the diaphragm 7 to 8 reps, and we have this slide. But and this is study done actually. They did CT section for this baby and they found actually the upper part of the chest open in the alveoli open and ventilated, but the lower part is all collapsed. So it, it so if you start to ventilate this baby as you are ventilating the upper part and you ignore it completely the lower part. So you create a ventilate VQ mismatch, a ventilation perfusion mismatch, the one that the Middash spoke about. So that's why keep the diaphragm between eight and nine reps. This is one way of success of high frequency or any actually interactive strategy. Even in conventions, you need actually the diaphragm to be between eight and nine reps. So to be sure that actually your your ventilation is distributed to all the lung here. So this X-ray found actually the diaphragm between eight and ten reps, between nine and ten reps, and then you did the blood gas, found your pH. Like, let's assume your CO2 now is 70. So what you will do? Now you have frequency 12, you have delta B3. CO2, do you remember this baby second day of life? And do you remember what we, we talked already about the weaning? And we said 70 is too much for the baby first five days. 
And that's not it. why Sayyidina Ibn remembers our protocol or guideline for the weaning. And we said in baby, this is a five days, they choose to they, they choose their CO2 parameter between 45 to 55. They didn't go to sick sleep because there is actually one study scaling in every one of us and burn every one of us. When they do permissive hypercapnia for tiny baby from the first day of life and they accept up to 65, they have higher incidence of intraventricular hypnosis. And this is why, because the CO2 dilate the cerebral circulations and actually cause more blood flow. So that's why we are burned here and we decided to go back a little bit and we put our parameter in the first five days of life till our blood brain barrier maturated and it's usually maturated by seven days of life. So that's why we said, let's, okay, let's be conservative here and we like our CO2 to be between 45 and 55. So that's why to jump to 70 here is a little bit too much and can cause a problem for them. So you have CO2 70. What you would like to do now? You would like to decrease the CO2 a little bit. Are you going to do this with MAP? Isn't it? This part, we said this, this have, this is oxygenation part. So you have this ventilation part. Which part are you going to choose? Which is more effective actually in CO2? It's actually Delta B is more effective than the It's nearly double the effective. So, so here you move from 30 and decide to go to 32, okay? And you repeat, still 70, go to 34. Because each time you move, you move by two. Go to 37, 38. So you reach your state where your CO2 is acceptable parameters. Now your CO2 is acceptable, 45, 50, 55. So decided to leave to give the time for the lung to leave. And the gradually you start to improve, okay? Yeah. So when you start this, you no, that's what I said. We would like to. initially you would like to have smart things. You don't do the same. So that's why you look for any parameter to help you. Okay. But at the end you would like to ventilate and you don't like CO2 to be high, so you create some problem. So that's why even if even if the stars start to be a little bit wiggling, but you have the acceptable CO2, this baby have very sick line. So that's why you need to balance all together. So that's why we said it's okay to delta B move from 30 to 34 to just to bring the CO2 from 70 to 65, I'm satisfied. Even if the side a little bit more here actually. Even if the side a little bit our our comparison or visual comparison, this is dependent on your initial setting. Your initial setting, your initial setting of setting, you don't have a period. So that's why we created this cube. So here you have this gas. So let's assume. If I this so it's a clear this part here, I'm not going to go complete, isn't it? So usually frequency we don't play in too much, honestly. Like I can tell you a small baby, see the baby less than less than one kilo in high frequency. If you use sensor medics, you use sensor medics or SLA, fix the frequency at ten, at twelve and leave it till you extubate it. Okay? So now what you have parameters? You fix the frequency at 12 and you lift it your map controlling your oxygen your delta B controlling your what CO2 so if you have any problem in CO2 what parameter are you going to touch delta B if you have problem in oxygen what parameter are you going to move so it's more simple actually than conventional to it it's more simple than conventional it's difficult it's difficult to take care of the baby on it because the baby will be a little bit fussy while it's <coughs> shaking, but there is some way actually the nurse can tackle this. But this is this actually very easy and simple if you have the sensor bedding. Sensor bedding is big, noisy machine. It's actually most of us would not like it's a tiny baby. If you use a drager, drager little bit problems. So clear this part here. Yes. So if you have problems like if you are washing CO2, CO2 35, what you will do? You will decrease the delta B, isn't it? Till you extubate your pain. Okay? So this is for high frequency. On sensor medics. So we would like just there is different here. If you see this machine, if you see the data it's on the plus, they don't have this thing to move in and out. Like you can see it, like you can see in sensor medic, there is big sensor go in and out. But here they don't have sensor. So actually they make it by Venturi systems. We don't care too much about the systems they use, you know, like they, they use just to push high flows so on our tube, so it can give jet the air. So it's different. I don't like to understand the system. 
But this actually changed, tricked us. <coughs> what they found actually, <coughs> each time in this machine will play on frequency or map, it will affect the amplitude. Because they don't have pistol to move in and out to give you a fixed amplitude. They make it through narrow tube in the system. So each time you increase the map, you will push the flow, so the flow will, will affect your amplitude. Each time you change the frequency, you decrease the frequency, so it will decrease the flow, so it will decrease your amplitude. Regular company actually, they, they are very smart. So what they decide to solve this problem? So what if you look for the manual? Sorry. So if you look for the manual, actually, like if this is a map, if this is a frequency, you can see the curve is going like this. Okay. So the map can move from 10 to 15. Sorry, the delta B can move 10 to 15 to 30 to 45 to 55. So each time you increase the map and the frequency, that delta B will go higher. So to avoid this problem, problems, you make it by percentage. So that's why here you see the percent, 100%, 80%, 60%, 40%, 30%, 10%. 10% of what? 10% of the amplitude at this frequency with this mean air vibrations. You know, like, how you, like let's, your baby on map 15. Okay, and frequency <coughs> 8, okay? 100% <coughs> for this baby, as he's taking amplitude, 35 centimeter water. Okay, this is the 100%. Okay, if you would like to get half of this 35, drop the delta B by 50%, so you'll get half of this. Okay? It's become complicated. It's not complicated, it's clinically absolute. What we are doing in our practice, and we do it actually like every day we come and see one of our baby on high frequency train. Fix the delta B on 100%. Because it's make logic, isn't it? You need the 100%, you need the highest amplitude at this delta B and the frequency. So fix it at 100%. So leave the amplitude at 100% and don't touch it, okay? So what parameter is left here? So here you fix the delta B at 100% and left. So what parameters left for to control ventilation and CO2? Frequency, isn't it? So if you have problem in CO2, okay, just move with the frequency. If you have problem in oxygen, just move in mean air vibrations. Okay? The changes in frequency should not affect the changes in CO2. Okay? Yeah, you are absolutely right. You are right, but this is the best way you can do it. Because your, your amplitude is 100%. You have nothing more in this machine. And that's why actually this machine is meant or bell for baby who's less than two kilo. Because they don't have strong pistons, they have very tiny venturi system, so it cannot give you a good volume. Okay? So that's why it meant for baby less than two kilo. So you cannot use it for baby like four kilo, five kilo, or six kilo. Some actually units use it for three kilo baby. Still it can work for three kilo. But just for because it's tiny machine, it's not good piston. I don't give you good delta B, good amplitude, so that's why we use it for people less than two kilo. So this machine, actually, if you have it for baby, goes actually like 1.5, uh, 600 grams, 1.8 kilo, two kilo. Actually, you can use this machine. It's very nice. You can use the same machine. You can use the same circuit. Just the hard circuit. So here you have the frequency. You decide to start with the 12. You have CO2 75. What you will do in frequency? Your frequency 12 and you have CO2 75. So you just decrease the frequency, isn't it? And just usually by two, just again, from 12 to 10, you have up to 15, and you have lower up to five, okay? It's okay, clear now? Simple? Can I add more complications? <laughs> <laughs> so let's assume you go higher in delta B. You have baby on map 20 this baby and it's very sick lungs and you are fix your frequency on 12 isn't it as we mentioned okay and you go higher in mean in vibrations okay 20 30 40 still CO2 is high it's a common scenario actually if the baby has severe oligohydramnus 
and we have hypoplastic glands. Mm -hmm. Usually, our usually we face this problem. We go higher than maybe we get exhumation, but you increase the delta B, you start to go 30, this 20, 40, okay, 50. Okay, baby is wiggling everywhere, but still you have problems. You know, there is another rule to say. We don't like actually the delta B to be three times the mean area. We don't like to exceed this limit. So that's why when you approach the three times, like here is 20, so when you are just like 10 below the three times, you have the frequency reserve, you can go back and play. Okay? So this is, that's why we go through frequency, sometimes we go from 12 to 10 to 8, if your baby on higher delta B. Okay? So this is the idea. So just for simplicity. And why this actually, why we don't like it to be three, more than three times a mean will differ? It's very tricky points on high frequency. Remember, this is a machine. Okay. So this is a machine, okay. And here is the baby, here is connected to the baby. Okay. So what happened, you have distending mean air with pressure 20, okay? And you give delta B gradually getting higher, higher, higher. So the machine actually pushing the air in, and at the same time, suck it in, suck it out from the beam. So there is positive inspiration, positive expiration. If you keep going higher, 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 at one stage actually, because the machine sensor medic start to suck from here actually, this circuit is very hard, it will not collapse. But the negative pressure will create it on the baby trachea. So at one stage the machine will push the air in, but start to suck, the first part of the airway will be collapsed with the negative suction, okay? Because you are exceeding the distending pressure. You get it? I hope if we have the RAM we can explain it there. So you have this distending pressures, the machine pushing the air in from the proximal bar to the distal bar. So it pushing the air in, okay, and it take it back, okay? If this part is is not actually hard or with low compliance, what happens when the machine suck back the air? It will be collapsed, isn't it? Because the machine this is this is active, active expiration. So the machine pulling the air out of it. So it will be collapsed, but because we use hard tubes, and if you look for our tube, we use it for high frequency, it's always hard tube, low compliance tube, so it avoids this collapse. So if you go higher, higher main airway pressures actually, you push the air and the, machine, the, the tubes will not collapse, but when the air start to suck, start to suck from the machine, from the proximal part, till it reach to the trachea of the baby. At the trachea and the tiny bronchiole, it will be collapsed actually, it will be collapsed. So actually you're pushing the air in, and you cannot take it out. So we reach a stage what we call a choke point. So we don't like to go higher or three times higher the mean air pressure, so we cannot reach to the choke point. That's, and it's very rarely actually you can reach this. I don't think in the last two, three years, we reach three times actually the mean air pressure. This machine is amazing, actually. It's amazing in washing CO2. It's our problems actually just, just to win so quick. Because you just start is very effective actually in washing CO2. So it's very rarely to reach this scenario. So always keep, if you are working on high frequency, you have the mean airway pressure, you have the delta B. If you're working on the Draeger, fix the delta B on 100% and you have just the mean airway pressure for oxygen and you have the frequency for CO2. So this is just for simplicity and you can use it as high frequency. Okay? When to wean the baby actually? You are weaning the baby gradually and you reach to map seven okay okay and you reach to delta b actually less than 20 okay so this is the times your baby ready to be extubated okay most of us actually would prefer to extubate the baby for less than one kilo just immediately direct to siva we don't like to connect them to conventional but this is depend on experience of your staff and your nurses mainly if you'd like to put him in conventional for one day until her lungs are minimal setting you can do it any more questions There is no volume trauma on high frequency. And remember yesterday we said, this is a machine which is give you tiny tidal volume, less than this space.
so it's actually if you look for the volume which a machine is give it's give one or two ml for all the breath so if you have baby two kilo and you give him two ml with each breath this means you give him volumes about one ml per kilo which is nearly equal to his dead space so no volume at all on high frequency and that's why actually there is like uh, actually that's why some people actually start to do study on starting the tiny baby on high frequency from the start why if, if this is tiny if there is no volume trauma you see there is many study actually uh, about to start from the start we didn't find significant difference when they start actually high frequency but only one study actually which is published on archives actually two years ago when they compared the Draeger high frequency with the conventional and they found benefit for using of the Draeger high frequency but till now we don't recommend because this depends on your experience of the staff this baby also it's annoying for the baby so sometimes you need sedation for the baby but definite it's more gentle definite high frequency is more gentle than conventional ventilation on the lung so this is definite sorry yeah you remember uh, you remember our presentation yesterday yeah he said if you put baby on conventional ventilation and this is your map six okay and your de delta b is 30 what's happened actually so your delta b will be 30 above the b isn't it okay but if this same sitting on high frequency okay it's actually this 30 it will be 15 above and 15 below okay, okay. so it's actually what you are using here in delta b or amplitude is half isn't it? It's nearly half because half of it above the mean air pressures and half of it below the mean air pressure. Because both active and inspiration and active expiration. So it's even barotrauma is less barotrauma actually. Okay. And remember we said something which is very important actually. So it was with the with the airway initially at the sensor here. You know this part this is a sensor. This is a sensor which is heated wire as Dr. Demirdas showed to yesterday. So it can detect the flow and it can give you the reading here if you adjust volume. So the heated wire when the flow go in, he can calculate you how much the baby get ML per key. So here at the sensor, this is your setting actually. At the sensor, your mean airway pressure is 20, your delta B is 30, okay? Gradually, the high frequency wave when it go down on soft tissue actually it's attenuated it's getting more weak what it reach actually to alveoli is 10 to 15 percent of the setting you adjust here so if you put delta b 30 it's actually the baby get in alveoli or the distal airway or the most soft airway or the gentle airway it's about 10 to 15 percent of your initial setting so if you start at 30 at the trachea the baby may have 20 at respiratory bronchioles they have 10 at the alveoli actually he may have only three or five so this is this is another advantage actually for high frequency that's why i said we commonly use it and we put actually our parameter just little bit lower so we can use it so bib 22 for small baby we never go more than bib 22 and immediately we shift the baby to high frequency and it's very simple actually our resident staff actually in the night they win him very nicely actually because they have only two parameters if he uses the dragger he knows that he will just play with the frequency for ventilations and the mean air vibration for oxygenations and he <coughs> forget completely about delta b 100 percent any questions yeah yeah no no like there is uh, this is the problems actually there is if you if you look for the study which is done on high frequency there is study done before the surfactant before the era of surfactant and study done after the era of surfactant this is the problems if you look for the studies you don't have lung strategy for opening so when they start you know like you are doing the study when you are doing the study you do protocol or guideline you decide to put this arm on high frequency and this part on conventional ventilation here actually the problems come in the recruitment groups on high frequency most of the study which is so bad effect they don't have like opening lung strategy they don't have criteria on the blood gas to we you know like so these are problems this is actually it's, it's common problems because it's very effective in washing CO2 sometimes you start your setting and you found CO2 drop to 30 so 30 it will cause cerebral vasoconstrictions isn't it for small baby it can cause periventricular accumulation isn't it and this cause bad outcome but we should avoid this by initially 
you have smart guessing of your setting what we are talking you look for the umbilicus moving you look for the frequency you choose the smaller frequency don't jump on higher setting so you watch the co2 and the create problems for that this is the point of it in the same times you have always opening lung strategy you need to do more frequent x-ray actually this is another part for other problems initially in first 24 hours or 48 hours actually we do at least every 12 hour chest x-ray for this baby okay and the same times you need to monitor the blood pressures because the lungs sometimes improve and you give higher mean airway pressures you remember something the mean airway pressure is nearly close to the beep so we are using move baby from beep six to mean air will pressure 16 or 18 so it's actually you opening that so if the compliance improve all of a sudden sometimes you just see the baby become hypotensive and actually you are compressing the heart and the blood vessel by your higher city so 12 hourly x-ray and observing observation of the blood vessel of the sorry of the blood pressures and heart rate is very important during the high frequency it's about the incidence of the group and the no, for new neonate we don't have lenses. If you look for the new neonate actually, and again actually, it's it, if you use it for short times with the permissive hypercapnia. I don't think we have we have actually uh, instance, and I didn't come across. If you have some study about it, you can mention. But I didn't come. Here. Yeah, yeah, it's maybe case report. Yeah, yeah, like uh, we we are submitting one case actually, and I hope it will be published. We have actually three, four cases where we just use it as. At nasal high frequency, we submitted actually last week. I hope inshallah it will be accepted. Okay, but uh, till now actually, uh, the idea if, if you leave even the conventional long, longer times, you'll get tracheomalacia and a lot of problems. Also. Any more questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have draggers again, it's very simple actually to shift him to high frequency, and uh, luckily we are the draggers guys actually they get us the software here so if you would like to see how we can shift it to high frequency and how it can work i think this is the best time you can do this how much i time you are going to use is it so you it 20 i'll tell you you are giving it 20 breaths per second okay and this 20 divided on the second and from this you get 33 percent of the cycle isn't it so it's very tiny i time so it's tiny volume isn't it yeah 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 you see the yeah you see the wiggling of the baby okay it's actually no, 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 that's what we said. We use it very commonly. If you have baby, actually, you can use it very safe. And it's very simple, actually, to move. Remember, we said you have only two parameters. You have the mean airway pressures and you have the frequency. Huh? No, we don't use it as routine. Look, I mean, like, if you hold it, you'll see. This is more That's what happens. Yeah, yeah, if you use low volume. This baby actually yeah. will get agitation because you just pump in his chest. So this baby is actually needs sedation. What type of sedation? As you hear the controversy about it. But we like actually we like the baby to be covered, we give small dose of morphine. That's about yeah. عندنا في الجلاء يا هاني عندنا في الجلاء هاي فريكنس اه يو هاف فريكنس اه دريجر 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 اه دريج
Yes, no, some hospital, actually, yesterday I spoke to the representative of the company, he said most of the hospitals didn't actually add the software. So if you phone them, they can come and they actually, they load for you the software. No, anything more than loading, just they got their, for money, their USB. No, they put USB back and they just download for the, the uh, what they did actually in this machine. This machine yesterday was not working as I thought. Not for extra money? Hmm? Not for extra money? No, 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 15. So here, we we'll go back again. So this machine starts to If you like to add to the C battery some mandatory press behind it. And if you make it actually it's more or less like the SID. Okay? So this like is a big acid. But this will be synchronized to all of this. So then the So if you don't have the sensor actually this one this one or this one. If you have the sensor you should use this one. Because if you have the this is the sensor. This is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And then this one. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is the one inside. Mm -hmm. And this is one is connected to it. It's very expensive. I think it costs more than 25,000 if you lost this sensor. Because this is the heated wire. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have the respiratory service. He takes this part, you know, this part. He takes this part, he cleans it each time. And that's why after we give the Cervanta, you know, sometimes we just pack for one minute, two minutes, we don't like the Cervanta to go back so it can affect the wire. Because this is a tiny heated wire, it can calculate the flow of the air, so we can use the parameter of the volume and the heat. So here, so we went to see that. Yeah, make me up. Yeah, we don't go high. Hold the drink? No, no, hold the drink. Hold the drink and turn down. Again, yeah. Like start again. Then you have to reach out. Okay, what is it? That is the hotel area. So we have wind moon, you know, like wind moon to check. But we start on this wind moon. We will get the sea bath. We will get the SID. We will get the SID. This is the system. So press on the sea bath. Okay. So it will give you the YB and high frequency. If you cannot get it, you can press on this one, you will get it. So just press high frequency, okay, it will give you graph, give you flat, uh, up and down, out, minus, uh, positive and off. Cross off, oh, sorry, off, it will stop. So when you shift to high frequency, press on, it will work. Okay? Now we'd like to, to increase the frequency or decrease the frequency, we'd like to increase the amplitude, go to the arrow up and down. So here, go to amplitude, so you can decrease the amplitude from here and it's 860. <coughs> Whatever you like, you like to increase from plus, okay, so you can see the 100. Okay. And then you would like to change the frequency, go up again, and this is the frequency. From here, you go down to 17, 16, 15, 12, whatever, etc. Or you go higher actually. All of the same actually. The finish of the same actually. Then you go back to the measurement. Okay. This is you have set one, visual one, you have set two, visual one. This is if you like to monitor them. We have your sitting here. This is how we leave our people. We get back to the measurement and Here you have high frequency amplitude, 100 percent. You have high high frequency frequency 15 hertz. Okay. If you would like to measure too, then you know how much the baby gets. Usually, actually, if the sensor are clean, actually they will tell you how much volume the baby gets, how much actually GC2 the baby gets. Okay. It's not that important. Major one, this is for conventional, okay? And this is the set one. What the baby having is a set one. Okay. 
will say more from sorry. It will be the same as the mean. Yeah. Yeah. You can go higher. Yeah. And change. Yeah. And take time. Then adjust. Yeah. So it can be considered. Here we have problem in measure 2, but usually the measure 1 is the B. Yeah, you can get it, but you can get it from the B, from the uh, measure 1, which is for conventions. Here you have 12 mean area pressure, and you have actually even the B is calculated. Yeah, but you can get it from the B. Yeah, 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 you can get
احنا طبعا في اخر الورك شوب ده على بدا يومين متتاليين بنتشكر طبعا لمجموعه الاي بي سي دي جروب ورسوها الدكتور ابراهيم حكيم والدكتور عاطف نورد النهارده ومتشكرين المجموعه كلها اللي كانت مشرفانا الدكتور علي والدكتور علاء الدبرداش واحنا طبعا اخذتونا عليكم فما ينفعش ان احنا نسيبكم فمحتاجين ان احنا دايما يبقى في تواصل بينا ان شاء الله ان شاء الله متشكرين جدا